a lot of them have multiple people across the record and same goes mm-hmm. for Carl and yeah. the work we do together. Sure. Um, yeah, it's usually, it's, it's really a team, team job, like average of three to five people working on getting that song across the line. Yeah. I, I, this is something that I'm trying more and more to do is to get, get more people in on a production, get more heads than just me. Cause, uh, Things get better when when there's more people involved on a record, you know, like we really I feel like so many people are so caught in this like it's really an egotistical bubble of like, I got to do this. I have to do the you know, I have to edit this. I I have to tune the vocals, of course, like I'm going to let someone else do that. But it's like ridiculous. It's like, no, bring someone else in on the team, you know? Yeah. And and I think Carl does a really good job at commanding the team because 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 with the projects with him he will have um julian doing the assistant stuff um lucas will sometimes do some some vocal editing um he's got other people that will do tracking and additional production or drums and with all these voices um so a lot of people will be like oh it's so many people to manage it's it's a waste of resources this that the other but you have a collection of ideas that compete with one another within a single project so um the the drummer will play back maybe a few different takes of the chorus and then you've got the producer and they're like, Oh, well, I like this one. And I, I like that one or, you know, and, and then there's sort of this negotiation that happens to get the best out of each part of the process because of the fact there's multiple people sort of, um, or not fighting, but like working together to in, in its best interest. Um, so yeah, right. no, he, he does, totally. he does a really good job. Like, he does a really good job. And like same when it, before it comes to me, I'm giving Carl pushback. I'm like, Carl, the vocals too, not in, to be honest, I actually, just so I can preface this 99% of the time is smashing the mixes out like perfect. But there are times where there's that pushback where it's like the vocals are too loud or there's sibilance here or, um, the snare. Cause he, he, he's really cool mix is really interesting. Cause every now and then he will just for the flavor, for the taste of it, he will, put something in the mix and make it ridiculously obtuse, whether it's like a particular high ha- open hi-hat yeah. or a particular perk or, or, or little guitar effect, you just hear it playing and then you just hear this like bing. And it's like, Oh, what, why, what was that? Um, and then that's like, like it, it's cool, but sometimes it's like, Carl, let's let, tone, let, it, tone it down a bit. Let, you're getting too excited, but no, no, 99% of the time he smashes it out of the park. And again, that's that friction I'm talking about, about working in a team where, um, yeah, it's, it's collecting the best of the best ideas and then filtering it through the process to the end. And you know, you've heard Carl's stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. You hear it and it's like, wow, this is, it's, it's really, it's really, it's really a credit to, to everybody on the record because it's just, it, it always comes out sounding incredibly unique, incredibly like sonically. It's just like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, that there's, there's some sonic secret going on there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I definitely am all about that. And, uh, you know, been, you know, with mastering engineers, like I'm, I love getting feedback and, and, you know, helping my, my mixes. Like, you know, I, I think I have this deal, you know, dialed in. Uh, I just did a, a master with, uh, Connor Salmoro, who was also on this, on the podcast. And he, you know, he gave me great like feedback before I finalized the mixes and, and he just was able to kind of like get rid of some of the subs that I didn't quite get right and couldn't quite hear in my room. It's just like, I need that at this point. Like I need that extra set of ears to kind of just like finalize the project. Otherwise, you know, I'm sec by the end of a mix, I'm just second guessing everything. If I don't have a mastering engineer kind of saying like, no, you're good. You're in the ballpark or like maybe the, the vocal is a bit harsh, you know, or whatever it is, you know, it could be anything. So I, I am all about that. Yeah. No, it is a fun process and it's a good process to recognize as well because um, yeah, it's, it's hard to build a team. And I think that's something that, I'm not sure if you spoke with Carl about it on the last one, but building a team, you know, yeah. if you had him on the, if, if you didn't well, talk you know, about I, it, you should I, get him back on. I don't know if I mentioned it on this, on this episode yet, but I mentioned it on, on Carl's episode, but, but I did hire Carl to do some coaching for me, which was much needed. Uh, and he kind of helped pull me out of a bit of a hole there. Um, and um, one of the things that like blew my mind, like just on our initial call was he just sent me one of the proposals that, that he sends and how he includes you and the team. And like, I was uh, just like, yeah. holy shit, this is world class because it's like, you're just showing, which, you know, which, um, which proposal was it? Was it the one with the sort of Navy blue? And... I, d- I don't remember. It, it wasn't, was it, the... was it, was was it a Word document that no, was no, no. typed out or was it a no, no, designed? No. It was designed. Yeah, it was like an do, Adobe. Do, do, you know who, do you know who designed that? Was it you? Yeah. <laughs> my man. I haven't sent you, I haven't sent you my, 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 my um, rate deck. Yeah, no, no, no. I was like, 
because he liked, he saw my rate deck and he's like, oh, that's really cool. How'd you do that? And I'm like, I, you know, sort of mucked around in um, Adobe XD and put this together. And I'm like, I'll do it for you, man. Because we're, we're close. We've done so many projects together. I'm like, I'm going to help you out here. So yeah, we, we, we flesh that out. And um, the copies his, I don't, I don't, I don't write any of the stuff in the proposal, yeah. but you know, I just had to take a mini gloat there. Sorry. Yeah, no, it looked amazing, and, but but also but also the copy was amazing because yep. th- just the way he like you know says like, hey, this is the team, this is how we're gonna do it, this is the price, yep. and it includes all these things with all these people. I was like, that's how you bring people on, and and you know, you think you're shrinking your pot, but you're just growing it. You know what I mean? Like it's it's the way to do it. Yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly the same. That's that's exactly right, and and yeah, you have that team, you. You allow people to understand that there are people there for you. You're like it's it's almost like a pamper service because a lot of a lot of studio like a, a lot of what's out there is you have to sell your mixing service or you have to sell your recording service or you have to sell your production service. So it it looks as like there's that transaction for that one itemized process and result. Whereas when you compartmentalize it and go, hey welcome we're gonna be working on a song together yeah you're gonna have a team that's working for you around the clock these are this is what joe's gonna be doing this is what tom's gonna be doing this is what jim's gonna be doing and we're all gonna be trying to help you get from here to here and this is how we're gonna do it um it's it's a very inviting process especially for high ticket clients that you know when they see that and there's that transparency behind it not that people are trying to hide things but when there is that full in detail transparency people people are very um very attracted to it and also it gives great recourse for discussion because any questions they might not know they had which sometimes in a project happens halfway down the track or just before you're finishing they're like oh what about this they can already have in front of them and ready to ask um because they've got more information present yeah 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 totally educating the uh the artists um you know, speaking of Carl, let's jump into the sauce segment because yeah. this is going to be a bit of a, you know, one-two punch because last week we talked about, you know, the production of this Mega Flower song. And since you mastered it, let's 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 show the transition between the mix and the master. So I actually haven't gotten a copy of the final mix pre-master because uh, Carl didn't respond to me and you didn't have it. But we'll <laughs> pretend it, I'll edit this in, you know, the so we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll listen to the pre-master and then we'll listen to the master and we'll talk about what happened in between? Sound cool? Yep, that's that's cool. Five weeks, you've gotta be kidding me. I can handle only five weeks. I was thinking it would last forever, so I bought in. And I was on the other side, searching your name every time. I realized I just want to apologize. Now we're going to listen to the mastered version. Dude, 
so yeah, Nick yep. sounds obviously sounds amazing, and uh, I'm assuming by the time this episode airs, I will have heard the pre the pre master mix, and I'm sure that there's definitely some improvement. So tell me a bit about what into the the process of mastering this uh, this record. So this mix came in sounding good. The balance was good, as as all of Carl's mixes are. I didn't give him any pushback or notes. Um, however, in my mastering process, and I think it's it's a result of um, us just working together. So I sent him a first mix, and he was very conscious of his vocal levels in this mix because I'm not sure whether the client or not was asking for them a little bit louder, but he wasn't sure how it would translate in the master. So he came back with a, a vocal message saying, hey, not quite sure about this. Can you go over it? Um, mm-hmm. And as well as that, in the the impact at the start of the chorus was causing a little bit of overcompression. So we revised that. And what I've got in here is a tilt EQ um, of half a decibel. So basically half a decibel, on the top end goes down half a decibel on the bottom end comes up. It tilts the overall curve. And I've done that. And I, and I, and I can recall exactly now why I've done that is because I was balancing out the low end with the presence of the vocals. So in my, my ears, the way I hear a track when any sort of contemporary music, I'm thinking of energy points, where are people going to latch onto this music to help carry them through the experience in a song like this? It's, the melody and vocals, as well as mm-hmm. the low end, that 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 beautiful big low yeah. end in this mix. And if the vocals are sounding a little bit too present, well, then in my head, I'm like, there are many things we can do. Do we duck the duck the upper mids a bit? Do we try and compress everything to squeeze it, or do we make the low end a little bit bigger so that energy there is helping compete against the mm. body or the presence of the vocal? Right. So in my head, I'm like, well, I'll just use a tilt EQ. It's 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 not super intrusive. It's only half a decibel tilted, so I'm not necessarily starting to pull in and you know get notchy and EQ up and down and here and there. I'm simply just thinking, well, how can I move that energy or just slightly shift it without losing the overall feel the juice of that track um so it was a tilt eq that actually achieved that so cool what what was the uh cro- the crossover or the frequency that you kind of started the tilt at was it like mid low, low mids or something at 1.2k uh-huh yeah uh, wh- 1. What, 1. 2. 1. why would you 2. decide to use a tilt eq versus just like bumping up the subs a tiny bit you know what i mean like what how does the tilt achieve that better because if i was were boosting the subs i would have had to boost the subs by at least a decibel Ah, okay. Whereas removing a little bit off the top and putting up a little bit at the bottom means there was less difference from that center point because um, everything is relative. So think of like yin yang EQ technique um, or just even theory. Everything is relative. You add low end, you're taking away top end relative to that position. Right, you're not right, necessarily right. using a filter in the top end to take it out, but the relative energy of that top end frequency is less than that of the low end frequencies. So using a tilt EQ means you get to minimize that amount of difference or amount of filtering you're using in your EQ. Because when you're doing a one decibel boost or a two decibel or three decibel, the more you're doing, the greater the greater a phase shift is occurring in order to create sure. that gain overall at that frequency point or at that at that center frequency right right right. so it's like more subtle more smooth and and achieving the 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 desired results basically think of it like a water flowing through a river it's always going to find the least path of resistance you can move big boulders and stuff and ruin the whole landscape of that of that river that's flowing (laughs) or the water will just flow through the the path that is that is most easiest. And for me, when I'm mastering, I'm not looking to fucking move boulders and 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 re re cut out things of people's mixes and shit. I'm trying to find out what's the path of least resistance to help get this to where it has to be. Yeah, um, right, right. Because right. minimal viable effort the integrity or something. Of what a client. Not not just that. It's also like we spoke before. You know, you've got a team that's working on it, um, and when somebody's signed off on it, you have to be very conscious of it's not just Carl who's sending me the mix. It's the client who's signed, his client who signed off on Carl's mix to get sent to mastering. So even though I'm right. raising with Carl, inadvertently, I'm also working for the sign off of the client who said, Carl, I love the sound of this mix. Well, love it. the client yeah. loves the sound of this mix. I need to make sure the sound that he loves is still there. Um, what else went on? Uh, I got a Vertigo VSC2 taking off like a decibel, a gain reduction. Um, I, I like this compressor. I'm not using it anymore. This is something I was using last year and it's good. 
it just smooths out the smooths it out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was only 